Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Fenway Park. This is Mark Fidrich. Now, each time he gets the ball back, you'll see him mumble a couple of words to the ball. The first man ever to pitch five career no-hitters. Catch them all, Joe! I don't believe what I just saw! Another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a pair-handed catch! Ricky goes, a pitch stick, and he's going to have it. Leaps high of the air, and he's got it! Let it be said that number eight, Cal Ripken Jr., has reached the unreachable star. Today, Today I, consider I consider myself, myself the, luckiest the luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face earth. of the earth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we invite you to rise. We invite you to rise. Welcome, fans, to This Day in Baseball's Daily Rewind. My name's Tom Hannon. I'm your host today, and I am looking so forward to bringing you this game. Uh, as you know, today's what we do here is we break down a certain game. We're going to bring you highlights of it, and we're going to put in some commentary along the way. And on today's game, it's October 15th, 1964, Game 7 of the World Series, featuring the St. Louis Cardinals against the New York Yankees. And Bob Gibson's on the mound today facing Mel Stoudemire of the New York Yankees. Now, uh, in games, the Cardinals were up three games to two, uh, but Jim Bouton took care of business for the Yankees. He of ball four fame. He pitched a strong game to force today's game seven at Bush Stadium. Now, there was a lot of theatrics before the game. So prior to the start of game seven, uh, the press wanted Gibson and Stoudemire to, uh, to, to show up on them. Now, there was a lot of... Now, there was a lot of theatrics before the game. Uh, it's Game 7 of the World Series, and Gibson's facing Stottlemyre. Uh, now, Stottlemyre had beaten Gibson in Game 2, and that's only and that will turn out to be only one of two losses uh, Gibson had in his career in the postseason, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, the other loss would come in his very last start against the Detroit Tigers. Um, so the press uh, wants them to pose on the mound. He's coming off a of game five where he pitched a 10 inning complete game victory and he felt as though he went through a boxing match. And, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali uh, type of boxing match where he just felt really beaten down. And he was going to start today's game on two days rest. But Gibson, being the competitor that he is, uh, right after he shook Stoudemire's hand, he says, I hope all your luck is bad today. Uh, you know, Gibson's the same guy who. Uh, Pete Lecoq, who hit the last home run off of him in his career, um, was talking about it because uh, it was a grand slam and an old-timers game, and Gibson uh, promptly went out and hit him. So that's uh, Bob Gibson for you. May he rest in peace. So uh, I'm going to bring you to today's game. Now the first audio we're going to take you for the game is it's in the top of the second inning. Gibson's facing Mickey Mantle. He is going to set the record with his 24th strikeout of the series. The old record had been set the previous year by uh, Los Angeles Dodgers great Sandy Koufax against the Yankees. So uh, here it is, Gibson Mantle. Mickey Mantle to lead it off for the Yankees. Here in the top of the second of the scoreless ball game, Bob Gibson threw only six warm-up pitches that time. He's saving his arm. First pitch to Mickey, a curve, a little low, ball one. First ball that Gibson has thrown in the ball game. Mick batting 350 has had seven hits and 20 at bats. Gibson's next pitch, fastball on the outside corner, one on one. On deck, Elston Howard with Joe Peppertone to follow. One one delivery on the outside corner again. One ball, two strikes. Gibson said when he pitched to Mantle in New York, he tried to throw the fastball or everything away from Mickey, knowing that Mickey was having trouble reaching that outside pitch with that bad knee of his. Here's the windup. Fastball a little low. The count is even at two and two. Yankee hitters are trying to slow Gibson down just a little bit, stepping out of the box between pitches. 2 2 delivery is a curse. Strike three. Please. And there's a record that Mr. Gibson has just broken, as Joe Garagiola told you. He needed one strikeout to tie uh, Koufax's record for the most strikeouts in the series, and two to beat it, and that's his second strikeout of the ball game. Here's Elston Howard. Now, through three, both men put up zeros. Stoudemire and Gibson are going pitch for pitch. 
But uh, things are going to change a little bit here in the fourth, so I'm going to bring you the entire fourth inning for you to listen to. Here it is. Nothing but goose eggs up on the scoreboard. First pitch to Boyer. Line right back through the middle. Base hit. And Sotomayor could not get his glove down in time. He tried to, but it was by him, and it just missed hitting him off the right knee. A bullet back through the mound. And now the hits are even at three apiece. The batter is Dick Grote, who bounced to first base in the second inning. Lenz and Richardson having quite a conversation, Phil. Uh, if you were playing short, who would be covering? Well, I see Lenz pointing to himself to cover, but I would let that second baseman have as much room in right field as he would want because Grote, as you know, can take that ball and almost throw it out there. So the shortstop must cover in a spot like this. Even though he's a right-hand hitter. Even though he's a right-hand batter. All right, Boyle leads the way. The stretch. It's to Grote. He takes it long inside ball one. Kenny Boyle, who can also run for a big man at first base. Pepitone holding him on. So over there, Boyer has to dive back head first. Boyer measures his lead. Uh, he's got a very efficient way of doing it. He gets a body's length and an arm away. So if he just falls, his fingertips will grab the bag. A body's length and an arm away. And that's just what he did, Joe. He fell back into first base. All right. For another quick throw. And this time, Boyer jumps back just ahead of Pepitone's tag. And as you can see, as Joe told you, this Grote who can handle that bat, Yogi Burr. Got Stottlemyre in the hole, infield and outfield alert. He don't know what he's going to do. The pitch, he takes it low inside ball two. Two or nothing. And this makes it rough on a pitcher, too, because he's got to not actually quick pitch, but try and get rid of that ball to not give that runner an extra jump at first base. And if you're a hit and run man, you wouldn't want a better spot than two balls and no strikes. Mm, that right. pitcher's got to be around that plate. So Boyer's got the good speed. they got the good combine going. All right, let's see what develops. Boyer leads away. Battlemire set. He doesn't go, and the ball is taken. It's ball three, and Howard turns around. He talked to Sakari. It's ball three. Dick Rote has a good eye and can hit and run any time in uh, any given situation. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. No score. Kenny Boyer at first. The stretch. The pitch is taken. Low ball four. And the Cardinals really have a threat going now with runners at first and second. Nobody out. And the batter, Tim McCarver. And the Yankee bullpen gets hot. Roland Sheldon, a right-hander, and Al Downing, a left-hander, are up down there. Howard out to the mound to talk with Sotomayor. McCarver walked in the second inning. Grote at first, Ken Boyer at second. And now McCarver steps back as Vern Benson whistles into him from the coaching box at third, flashes some signs. Pepitone in front of the bag at first, Boyer even with the bag at third. The stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch, swing, and a foul tip, strike one. So the Cardinals not going for the sacrifice, at least not on that first pitch. And once in a while, they let him swing for one strike, Joe. All right, McCarver steps back. Now Boyer moves in a little bit at third base. Lynn's trying to hold Kenny Boyer close to second, shaded over that way. The stretch. The pitch, swing, ground ball. Pepitone's got it. Goes to Lynn for one. Back to Solomon. Wild throw. And a run is going to score. 
A run scores, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. On a hard hit ground ball, Pepitone took a base hit away from Macaba. Fired to Lynn, but Stottlemyre late getting over to first base, trying to keep his foot on the bag and backhand that ball. It got by him as Stottlemyre fell to the ground. The run scored, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. So that'll be a fourth play for Macaba. And we'll see who gets the error. If they give it to Lynch, it'll be a tough play for Lynch to get the error. And Lynch is charged with the error. McCarver is at first with one out. Groat was forced at second base. So the play goes, a fourth play, from three to six, and give Lynch an error. McCarver did not advance to second, and here is Mike Shannon struck out his first time up. Pitch to Shannon, a curve, a strike one called. Bobby Richardson was the man backing up that play. Uh, Phil had kept McCarver from uh, getting the extra base. That's right. Bobby came from nowhere. Feel of that uh, carom off the wall. So the cards break the ice here in this deciding game of the World Series. Only one out. McCarver leads away. The stretch. The pitch. Line to right center field. A base hit. There goes McCarver last second. Man up with it. It's Wilkins in his second base. And the Cardinals have runners at first and third. The batter is Dal Maxville. Remember, we had a situation like this with Maxville up there, and he attempted a squeeze play. Howard going out to Stottlemyre, just a quick visit. And I'm sure that's one thing he reminds him of because the worst thing you get out of it would be second and third and two outs with a chance for your pitcher at least to come up. That's right, Joe. They attempted it here, and he fouled off the pitch the last time. All right, runners at first and third. One out, the cards lead one to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Runners lead away the stretch. The pitch, the runner goes, the swing and the miss, the throw to second base will not be in time. The runner coming to the plate, the throw not in time. The double still works. The Cardinals pull a double steal and score a run. And I want to tell you that was beautifully executed as McCarver got two-thirds of the way to second base and hesitated for a fraction of a second. At third base, Tim McCarver hesitated until Howard threw to second. Howard's throw was a little high towards the first base side of the bag, and Richardson could not get anything on the throw. The Cardinals pull a double steal, and they lead two to nothing. With Shannon at second, and a count of one strike on Dal Maxwell. He swung at that pitch. The curve is blown away, and Shannon had a good jump. That time looked like he might be going, Joe. Say a fine piece of running, because uh, Howard had stopped McCarver at third base, and that's what you have to do. Is he stopped him dead, then threw to second, and it was not a... a Real hard throw because he wanted to make sure McCarver stopped, but McCarver timed it perfectly and scored easily. The pitch line to right field, a base hit. Ricky Mantle up with it, they're sending Shannon in to throw to the plate. Not in time, he scores, and Maxwell goes to second base. Holy cow, these Cardinals are red hot right now. Up 3-zip, Gibson with two on, one out, faces Phil Lenz. One of the biggest at-bats of the game, and here it is. For the Cardinals, and now at the end of the fourth inning, the score is the Cardinals three, the Yankees nothing. And the batter will be Phil Lenz. Lenz bounced the third and beat out an infield single. One man out. And we're going to have some action in the Cardinal bullpen. Roger Craig, a right-hander gets up. Fresh at second, Egan at first, one out. <clears throat> Gibson set. His pitch is lined to right center field, and coming in fast, Shannon. He makes the play, the throw to second. He got him a double play, a great play by Mike Shannon. Took the base in away from Phil Lins and turned it into a double play. Holy cow, that Shannon can fly. And the score now is 
The Cardinals three, the Yankees nothing. Now, in the bottom of the fifth, Al Downing replaces Stottlemyre, and he's going to face Lou Brock. Now, Lou Brock, who was traded earlier in the season from the Cubs to the Cardinals, hit 348 after the trade, and Brock really um, blossoms with the Cardinals and becomes the Hall of Fame player and, of course, the historic World Series player that, he, um, that he's known for. So here's uh, the fifth inning, and it's going to lead off with Brock, but I'm going to play the whole inning for you because a lot happened in the fifth inning. Downing is a new Yankee pitcher, 3 to nothing, not to score when the bottom half of the fifth inning. New Brock, Bill White, and Ken Boyer. Mike Shannon took a base hit away from Lynn and then flipped it to second base. The throw skipped in, Grote able to come up with it, a big double play. That ended that fifth inning. Downing is the Yankee pitcher, a good fastball, an overhanded curveball, he throws his slider. Lou Brock will lead it off in the bottom of the fifth. Brock tried to beat out a bunt in the first, he singled the center in the third. Boyer comes in close to third base. Al Downing. The new Yankee pitcher is ready, and here's the pitch. Swung on. Deep in the right center field. Back, back, that ball is. Swing and loose in right center field. So it's a 40 nothing ball game. Here is Bill White. Swung on. Line drive. Center field. That's the base hit. Roger Maris is up. White stops at first. And on two pitches, the Cardinals have hit two shots of Al Downing. And the Yankee bullpen swings into action now. Elston Howard out to the mound to slow the pace down just a little bit. As Lou Brock hit a home run, White lines the single as out in the bullpen. Joe, both those pitches were high fastballs, too. High fastballs, and they jumped on them and really sent them right on out of here. One home run, one a single. Boyer, he began it all in the fourth inning when the Redbirds picked up three runs. He singled in the center field. Big, powerful right-hand hitter. The pitch. High and inside, and it's ball one. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. One run is in. Four to nothing. Bottom of the fifth, St. Louis leading. The seventh game of this 1964 World Series. Bill White. Leads off the pitch. Swung on, line drive, right field. Mail going over fast. He can't get it. One hop off the wall. Up with the ball is Mail. White is rounding third. They're going to hold him up as Boyer goes into second. The throw comes in over Howard's head. Down and boots the ball, but White cannot come on in. The throw by Richardson, the relay man, was over the head of Elston Howard. Downing very alertly backing up the play. He booted the ball, but not far enough to allow Bill White to come on in. With nobody out, Vern Benson... Doesn't uh, want to take any chances and run the Cardinals out of an inning, so he put up the red light for Bill White, who stopped at third. Boyer's on at second base, and the hitter is Dick Rhodes. A double for Boyer. Here comes Yogi Bear out of the Yankee dugout. Roland Sheldon is warming up for New York. Downing has really been greeted by the Cardinals. Lou Brock hit the first pitch for a home run onto the roof in right center field. White then hit a hard single in the center field. Boyer doubled a one-hop line drive up against that wall in right center field. And now Yogi will make a pitching change here and Sheldon, a right-hander. Roland Sheldon, the third Yankee pitcher used by manager Yogi Berra as the Cardinals, who scores three runs in the fourth inning, has scored... One run here on a home run, have base runners at second and third, nobody out, and Pete Mickelson begins to loosen up for the Yankees down in the bullpen. Joe, you know you've been wondering how long can they silence these big bats of Bill White and Ken Boyle. And they waited a long time, but they're sure booming them today. Really some hard shots. White's two base hits. Double the center and the single. Both hit right on the nose. Boyer has two base hits. Brock a big home run. 
Sheldon, a big, tall right-hander. This is the second game that Sheldon is appearing in. The infield comes in for the New York Yankees. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning, four to nothing. That's the score. St. Louis is out in front. Bill White is at third base. Ken Boyer is at second base. Dick Grote is the hitter. They shade Grote in the outfield towards right center field. Not too deep. Mal nor Maris. Sheldon, the right-hander. Now Lins drops back. Here's the pitch to Grote. Swung on and missed at strike one. A foul tip, says Frank Sicori. Boyer is in on the grass at third base. Lins is back a couple steps at shortstop. Richardson and Pepitone are in. One strike. They count on Dick Grote. White leads off third. Ken Boyer leads off second. 4 nothing. New York leading. The pitch. Swung on a foul tip. And a strike two. That was an overhanded curveball. Shelling came from right on over the top. Two strikes to count on Dick Grote. Grote bounced out and walked. Tough man to strike out. Sheldon and Elston Howard know this, working carefully. White's at third. Boyer is at second. There's nobody out. Sheldon ready. Here's the pitch now. Pushes him back with a high tight fastball. And it's one ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch now. Swung on and fouled off again. Bounces around. A battle between Sheldon and Grote. One ball and two strikes to count. St. Louis four, New York nothing. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Bill White at third base. Ken Boyer is at second base. Grote waves that bat. Sheldon looks down for that sign. Taking plenty of time. Checks the runners. Here's the one-two pitch to Grote. Swung on. A foul ball out of play down the right field corner. Grote just trying to get a piece of that ball. Waiting until the last possible minute. And Bill White at third base. He's edging up. And ground ball to Lins. He'll be coming in. Lins is back. Richardson, Pepitone, and Boyer at third. All in for the play at the plate. Sheldon ready. The pitch to Grote. Swung on a bouncing ball up the middle. Here comes White. Richardson's play will be at first base. In time, Grote is out, but White scores. Bobby Richardson on a slow hit ball. Took a look at the plate. White had a good lead. Able to score. Richardson made the play to first base. In time to get Grote. Boyer takes third. So it's a five to nothing ball game now. And the hitter is Tim McCarver. Grote gets the run batted in. The scoreboard man, he's giving him two runs up there. Wonder who he's rooting for, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no question, Joe. McCarver waits the pitch. Swung on. Bouncing ball. Foul down at first baseline. And Pete Mickelson. And the Yankee bullpen comes up with it. One strike to count. Five nothing. St. Louis leading. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. This is Joe Garagiola with Phil Rizzuto. The seventh game of the 1964 World Series. Both these clubs really battling. They've battled all year long to get into a World Series. Now it's the seventh game, and right now St. Louis leads five to nothing. Infield in. Boyer a good lead at third. Sheldon ready. McCarver waits. The pitch. Outside. One ball, one strike. Cleet Boyer broke on over to third base as if there were a pickoff play. And big brother Ken says something to him. He'll probably tell him a little more when he gets him home tonight. One ball and one strike. 
on Tim McCarver, who has been a real hot hitter for the Cardinals throughout this series. Sheldon Reddy, the 1-1 pitch to McCarver. Outside, and it's ball key. Two balls and one strike, one man out. Two runs are in, 5 nothing. St. Louis leading. Yankee infield in. And they want to choke that run off at the plate. McCarver waves that bat. Two balls, one strike, one out. Sheldon, the big right-hander, ready. Here's the pitch. It's a strike of fastball. Off that outside corner, and it's two balls and two strikes. Frank Sikori, the plate umpire, calls time now. Downing came in to relieve. And the starter, Stottlemyre. And a home run by Brock, single by White, a double by Boyer, and Sheldon has come on. McCarver waits. Two balls, two strikes. Sheldon delivers. Swung on, a little looper, right field. Mal's going to make the catch. Boyer tags up. Here he comes. Here comes the throw. It is not in time. McCarver on a sacrifice fly. Drives in Ken Boyer from third base. And the Cardinals now lead six to nothing. So there are two out, and here is Mike Shannon. It was a race between Mantle and Boyer. Boyer able to score on the sacrifice fly hit to Mickey Mantle. Now the Yankees are down 7-zip, but it's starting to look pretty bad for them. But um, with two on and future Hall of Fame teammates face off with the tiring Bob Gibson facing Mickey Mantle. Here's that at bat. So it's base runners now at first and second, and Mickey Mantle is the hitter. Johnny Keene, the Cardinal manager, pacing in the dugout. They have a right-hander, Roger Craig, a right-hander, Ron Taylor, warming up down in the bullpen. Mantle was out on strikes, and he bounced out. Richardson off second, Maris off first. The pitch by Gibson swung on and fouled back, and Mantle had a good cut. St. Louis, six. New York, nothing. We're in the top of the sixth. Richardson leading off second base. Roger Maris, a couple steps off first base. Mickey Mantle in that batter's box, right down the end of that bat. Gibson delivers. Swung on. Hit deep in the left field. Back goes Brock. Back, back, back. That ball's a home run over the 379-foot marker in deep left center field. Driving in Richardson and Maris. Mantle comes in to score. It's now a 6-3 ball game. Now, Mantle's home run is his 18th career World Series home run. And it's going to be, ironically, his last postseason home run of his career. His 18 are three more than Babe Ruth, who hit 15 in World Series play. Although Manny Ramirez, Bernie Williams, Albert Pujols, and, oddly enough, Derek Jeter have all hit more career home runs in the postseason None did it in as few at-bats as Mantle. And in fact, if Mantle had this, as many at-bats as Manny Ramirez, he'd have over 32 home runs, and Manny has 29. It just shows you how great a player Mantle was. And with the uh, expanded playoffs and the uh, weakened pitching that he'd be facing, I wouldn't have been surprised if that number was a lot greater than 32. Cardinals manager Johnny Keene later affirmed there's no doubt that those runs gave Gibson something to work with. I've never had a gutsy ball player, but it was getting the lead that enabled him to last. Now we're in the ninth with the Cardinals up 7-3. to It's closing time. This is when players like Gibson bear down. Um, but, you know, the Yankees had a lot of grinders themselves, and uh, they're not going to go down easy. So here is the complete top of the ninth for you to enjoy. Tom Trace to lead it off. Top of the ninth inning. Bob Gibson has completed his warm-up tosses. Down in the bullpen, Sadecki and Craig 
Start to loosen up to pitch the trash is a strike call. One strike. Trash batting left-handed against Gibson. Top of the ninth. St. Louis, seven. New York, three. Gibson delivers. All pitch, strike two, and listen to this crowd. Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The top of the ninth inning. Seventh game of the 1964 World Series. Gibson, working plenty of time. A two-strike count on Tom Fresh. Gibson ready. Good pitch. Swung on a foul pitch. He caught it and knocked the ball. Hold back McCarver. And he still held the ball. Well, I've never seen that play before. Well, that's two he's pulled today. Touching hard play for a first play. And knocked the glove off and caught it barehanded. McCarver's glove came off. And he still held the ball. So there is one out. Now it's three for you. Each strike out to Gibson. This World Series is not everything. The pitch by Gibson. And he has pitch to Creed Boyer. Swung on, fly ball, deep to left field. Luke Rock is coming back. Near the warning strike. That ball is out of here. As he hit a 3 2 fastball, so it's now he's coming a four ball game. Creed Boyer, on a 3 2 fastball, has just hit a home run into the left field bleachers. And now Johnny Blanchard will come up as a pinch hitter. Blanchard, the pinch hitter for Pete Mickelson. Blanchard, a left-handed pull hitter. It's the second home run for the Yankees. Mickey Mantle, a three-run homer. Boyer has just hit one. Brock and Ken Boyer have hit home run for St. Louis. One man out. One run is in. Here's the pitch by Gibson. Swung on and foul back. Strike one. Seven to four. Top of the ninth. St. Louis out in front. Gibson is going all the way. Ready. Blanket white. Outside. One ball, one strike. Outfield deep, pulled around towards right. Infield is back. Maxwell just about on the edge of the grass. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, a foul tip and a strike two. One ball, two strikes. There's one out, one run is in. Seven of four. St. Louis is out in front. Top of the ninth inning. Seventh game. This is it. Gibson ready. The pitch. Curveball. Just did get a piece of it. Looks like Blanchard might have been fooled, but not enough that he couldn't get that bat out there. He just get a piece of it. So he stays alive. One ball, two strikes. Time is called now. As the left field umpire, Vinny Smith, wants the spectators to stay in the bleachers in left field. Everything set now. Ready to go. Gibson delivers. Blanchard swings. Missing. And there are two out. Nine strikeouts for Bob Gibson. Gibson in his series now struck out. 31 men. Here is Joe Lynn. Fouls one right back here. And it's strike one. There are two outs. St. Louis, seven. New York, four. Two outs, top of the ninth. Bob Gibson. Delivers, lane, swing, fly ball, deep to left field, loop up, over near the line, back, back. That ball is a home run for Phil Lynch as Vinny Smith gives the sign. So Lynch has hit a home run, and it's a 7 5 ball game. And it brings up Bobby Richardson. Two home runs in this inning. 
Johnny King. Hasten in the dugout. You know what's going to be his mind. He'd like to see his pitcher get a complete game, but how far can he go? Yankees battling back like they've been battling all year. The Cardinals battling to win this game like they've been battling all year. Two evenly matched ball clubs. Two runs are in. Bobby Richardson, the man who has really been getting a base hit in this series, 13 of them. Time is called now. Once again, the Bleacher fans leaning over the wall. And the announcement is made that the game will be stopped until they get off the wall. Bobby Richardson up there with two outs. Seven to five. He's got to get on to get the big bomber Maris up to the tying run. Bob Gibson, ready, delivers. It's low, ball one. One ball, no strike. Roger Maris kneeling on the on deck circle with that big bat in his hand, waiting to get up there as Richardson takes the strike. One ball and one strike. This ballpark just bulging with every pitch. One ball, one strike. Richardson waits. Gibson delivers. Swung on, top up. Knoxville at second base. Calling for it. Makes the catch. The Cardinals win it. And this ballpark, complete bedlam. The final score is St. Louis 7, New York 5. And in a moment, we will review the highlights of the game for you. Now, I hope you enjoyed Gibson's masterpiece. You know, a 7-5 win. He pitches the St. Louis Cardinals to the World Series. Uh, he certainly had better overall performances, but uh, few were as gutsy it was today. I mean, you have to remember, today's performance was on two days rest. He had been doing the bulk of the work for the Cardinals throughout the season and the year, and he was exhausted. But he pitched well enough to win this game, which... Uh, gave the Cardinals a World Series championship. And uh, as we know, we're just seeing the beginnings of his Hall of Fame career. Uh, and if you're interested in more, in, and if you're interested in hearing today's game in full, you can check out the link to the game in the show notes uh, to the full game. Uh, it's about two hour, two and a half hours long. And you can also check out Mickey Mantle's page, uh, Bob Gibson's page on thisdayinbaseball.com. Uh, the it's, there's some amazing chronology for you there. I mean, there's hundreds of events for these players, um, and you can just see the home runs, the no-hitters, the 10 strikeout games, the World Series games, and so much more. Uh, there's a ton of stuff on there. Um, and I have a really cool announcement to make, too. Uh, if you So a really cool thing I'm going to be doing uh, next week, I'm going to be putting out a podcast for Mickey Mantle's uh, playoff home runs. Uh, I've got... Uh, 15 of the 18 uh, that I have recording for, and I'm going to play them for you. And uh, you can listen to them, and the announcers, uh, uh, the radio announcers, the TV announcers, is going to be a, a really cool podcast I'm looking forward to putting together for you. Now, uh, also, just check out our YouTube channel, This Day in Baseball. There's over 600 games for you to enjoy on that channel, and there's a couple hundred interviews and other hundreds of videos for you to look at. And thisdayinbaseball.com, I call it a tre treasure chest because you just never know what you're going to find. And what's trending right now on this day in baseball.com is uh, the Cubs fire their ball girl, Marla Collins, when it's revealed she uh, posed nude in a Playboy magazine. It's not something I would assume would be trending right now, but it is. Um, and the next one is uh, a Bob Gibson start when he strikes out 10 batters uh, to lead them over the Cardinals in Game 7 of the 1967 World Series. Uh, and you can go on and on. There's another one about the Boston Pilgrims winning their first World Series. So there's a ton of stuff to uh, to look on in this day in baseball.com. There's over 60,000 articles of events that happen on this day. So check them out. I hope you enjoy them. Bob Gibson's page, Mickey Mantle's page, whatever's trending on this day in baseball.com. You never know what you're going to find. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. I'd love feedback. You can shoot me an email at tom at thisdayinbaseball.com. You can find me on just about every social media platform there is. Just look for This Day in Baseball. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you at the ballpark.